landing areas on the top of the pad and the recharging system is on the back side of this structure. On the left side there are crew quarters for overnighting of pilots and on the right side is a control center and a crew rest area. There are arbitrage batteries that trickle charge from the electric grid all day long. And when an aircraft lands, it sloshes all that energy that's been stored in the stationary batteries into the aircraft batteries through DC to DC converter. So this is the uh, electric distribution container and this is a humidity and temperature controlled storage container. And here is the pilot lounge and the control center with, uh, with a seating area. If you're daytime charging your aircraft for 40 minutes, you can come down to what is the equivalent of a fixed base operator, an FPO lounge area for the pilots. This is the uh, control center or the pilot lounge area where we, we've taken two shipping containers and we've taken a wall out of them and they both go side by side uh, and they get locked on the outside and these panels actually come off and the entire thing splits so it can go onto a truck end to end. And in here, if you're recharging upstairs, you can, uh, you can hang out down here for a few minutes. Uh, there's a kitchen. Uh, there's a restroom over here. And all the services for the kitchen and the restroom are in this elevated floor and under the cabinetry. So these are the, uh, the pilot um, sleeping quarters. There's a left hand and a right hand. So you can reconfigure these in any orientation you want. And the, uh, the sleeping quarters have uh, a porch area and a sleeping area here where a full-size bed um, has all the utilities and services underneath it, a full bathroom with a shower, and the entire system is accessible um, by popping the bed up. So this is the top deck of the recharging pad. Obviously the aircraft lands in the middle. These are NVG compatible lights on the primary circle and there's periphery lights around the outside. There's a netting around the outside and solar panels underneath uh, the netting. Uh, over here we have the energy storage containers. In here there's, um, there's about 500 kilowatt hours of batteries of reused, recycled um, aircraft batteries that were used for our first test flight campaign and now they're in sub-containers inside those containers with a DC to DC converter inside there that pumps the energy down and up to the aircraft uh, when the aircraft's connected. So this is the power distribution unit where we have a site controller. We have a lighting controller. We've got the 208 volt sub panel of a 480 volt transformer, um, the 480 distribution, a DC disconnect switch, and an AC to DC converter. So this is uh, one of the storage containers. 
Um, and in here, we use a very, very simple construction method of uh, insulating, heating, providing power to a uh, storage connect container to, to make a secure but very efficient um, insulated box that fits the form of the balance of the containers here. So there can be n number of these lined up at uh, any recharging pad. This particular one is just a maintenance uh, container. Um, again, in the future, we hope to deploy these throughout the country uh, at Class D&E airports to service the intermediate recharges that go from destination and origin points. So again, the, the system's made up of a whole bunch of these uh, simple, recycled, one-trip use uh, storage containers. We pop this superstructure and a helideck up on the top, add a bunch of reused, recycled batteries, and uh, and we end up with a recharging pad for electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Every site is a bit different. Uh, some of them will have more energy, some of them will have more power, depending on the frequency and the utilization. But out of these simple building blocks, uh, we're able to deploy a vast network of uh, recharging infrastructure throughout initially the east side of the United States and uh, in the near future, the west coast, and then throughout the world.